Good afternoon, everybody. I hope everyone is really well. Thank you so much, as always, for uh, spending an hour with me on these sessions. I can see that we've already got some international callers. So I'm based in Essex. I'm Emma Good. I'm the founder of the Digital Marketing Agency, 24 Fingers. And we help people all around the world get more ROI from the marketing. We've got Silvana, I can see, from Tanzania. Um, Tony, hi, Penny. Hi, Amanda. Just going to let Nada in. So this is your session. Um, please pick my brain, ask me anything about digital marketing. We run campaigns for companies um, from kitchen tables through to 50 million pound turnovers. So there's a lot that we've seen and we can share our experience together. What's working on social, what's working on mm -hmm. Google Ads, it's connecting. Lead, lead generation, etc. cetera. Um, there's a lot that we've seen. Um, we do things like have to take the Facebook exams every year. So we're already up to the speed in terms of what's working right now and what isn't working. So please do feel free to um, shout out if anybody wants to jump in with a question straight away. More than happy to answer. And um, yeah, go for, go for it. So I think Silvana's taking herself off mute. Hi, Silvana. Hi there. How are you? You good? How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Any specific question that I can help the with? Um, uh, this is about, um, it, this session is about marketing strategy. Is that right? Oh, it's an ask me anything. So if you've got a specific question, just pick my brain. It's an ask me. Okay. So, okay. Um, with regards to, I um, just wanted to ask you about um, email marketing. Um, um, from a, as you know, we are a tour operator here in Tanzania, and um, how often should one send? email marketing emails out on, mm -hmm. on average should it be because sort of, you don't want to bombard people so that they get bored and they end up unsubscribing mm -hmm. um so is it uh, um is that the sort of general rule of thumb um, Savannah, I'm going to turn your, I uh, recommend turn your camera off only because the internet's a bit um, fading in now, so I can't really hear you. So maybe if you turn your video off. But okay. I, think, I think the question was how often should you be emailing mm. your audience? Thank and you. What I'd what I'd recommend is I'm just certain, turning the video off. Okay, um, I'd certainly recommend emailing. Yeah, is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'd certainly recommend emailing more than once a month. Um, anything over or over once a month, people tend to get more spams and they get more unsubscribed. People forget us. And if we remember that on average, a click, an open rate is going to be you know thirty to forty percent. Only thirty percent of your audience are ever going to be seeing your emails. So I genuinely wouldn't be worrying about bombarding people. Obviously, if you're going to um, be spending you know, sending emails every hour, you might be spamming them, but certainly um, once a week, once a month, absolutely fine. I get from a particular set of entrepreneurs, I get emails daily, and because I'm interested in their content, it doesn't feel onerous. What I would be doing is sending out campaigns, checking um, subject lines, doing tests, checking tests on time of day sent and day of the week. And you will start to see that people are really engaging with your emails at the weekend or at a particular time of day. They're really um, um, engaging when you do a certain emoji in the subject line, for example, just test and measure, test and measure. But in this world of um, kind of limited attention, I, I would encourage you certainly want, more than once a month if you can do it weekly amazing you want to be front of mind and you want to make sure that you've reduced your spams and the unsubscribe rates as much as you possibly can of course you want to be giving them something of value so think about your content think about what you could give them it might be in your case you know 
10 things I wish I knew before I, I started to climb Mount Kilimanjaro the first time or 10 things you definitely want to pack before you book your trip to Tanzania. That type of content, um, stuff that you can make really personal, something that you can give really great added value that's going to make somebody want to pick up the phone and book with you and James as opposed to a high street agent. So I hope I hope that helps, Savannah. Yeah, that, that's that's useful. Thank you, Emma. Because um, yes, we get clients in every week, and they're all experiencing. And they're uh, apart from our, our photography, um, clients love taking their own photographs. So, um, with regards to um, Facebook and Instagram, um, regarding marketing. Um, again, with Instagram, obviously, it is what the name says, instant. So we try, if possible, uh, whenever we get new um, photographs in, uh, we try and download the reels, etc. cetera. And um, is Facebook as important as Instagram? Um, in some cases, it can be more important. I think it really goes back to knowing your audience, Savannah. So if you think about your ideal client who's likely to book with you, think about their demographics, think about how you can access those type of people. And it might be that actually Instagram isn't your place. It might be that actually you've spent all your time on TikTok. It might be that you've spent all your time on Facebook. Only you can answer that. Um, the way to answer it is looking at demographic, looking at interests, Beauty over Facebook and Instagram, for example, you can post into groups. Um, the beauty over TikTok is that you can produce really authentic video content that's going to trend quicker than it will on Instagram. So I don't think that's a one-size-fit-all um, answer. Again, it all goes back to kind of testing and measuring and planning. Um, I personally see a place for you on all three of those channels, but for different reasons. Okay, thank you very much, Emma. No, I don't want to take up too much of your time uh, with, with other people wanting to. Uh, thank you, Savannah. Uh, Give my best thank you very much. Well, pleasure. Um, so Amanda has asked um, a great question regarding tracking on her website. So Amanda said that they use Google Ads and Analytics, but actually at the moment only 40% of revenue is recorded and she's on Google um, consent model but, uh, mode version 2. Um, and the tags are all done through Tag Manager. So, um, Amanda, I've got a very quick question. In terms of your page um, campaigns, is it just Google Ads or are you doing Facebook and Meta as well? And I would say if you're experiencing this, this, um, this difficulty, I would say if you can go to an upgraded um, tracking, for example, Facebook message, you know, they do the conversion um, API tracking as well. Server side, um, if you're experiencing already only 40%, I'd go to like the nth degree because clearly this seems to be quite a big issue for your company. Very different if it's a service-based based company. Um, I know um, amazing, um, amazing um, tracking people if you want some introductions. Tracking is one of those things that uh, causes us a lot of headaches as, as marketers. Um, in terms of Facebook, if you're advertising on Facebook, I would highly encourage you to do it service side through the conversion API because um, there will be a huge discrepancy between what Facebook um, shows in the ad manager versus what your actual conversion server side shows. So definitely do that. You can even get Facebook to help you set that up nowadays, um, but it, it should be fairly easy with um, sites like Shopify, Squarespace. There's, there's integrations that uh, if you do want any help, um, diving much deeper in tracking and looking at behavior and looking at, you know, absolute ROI tracking as opposed to um, being a few variances, do uh, send me a DM and I can happily introduce you to some people. That would be my pleasure. Okay, um, so we've got Penny, Tony, Nada, Claudia. Um, do shout out, feel free, take yourself off mute. just video. typing. Oh, Sorry. brilliant. I was just Hi, typing. Penny. It was going on forever. Hi, Emma. How Thank are you? Thank you for your time. Um, oh, my pleasure. Okay, so probably easier if I actually explain it. So um, I'm talking about Facebook. Yeah. Um, at the moment, I've got um, 
my personal Facebook page, which I don't really do anything on. Yeah. Um, but then I've added a um, an additional page to it um, in a different name, so in a pen name. Um, but it, but the one of the problems with that is the, the, the second, the business side, if you like, the second um, account or additional page can't join groups and can't do yeah. other things. This is what so, we emailed about. Yes. It? So I was thinking maybe it's best to um, swap them over and make one, that, that make the, the make the business one, the main profile and the personal one, which I don't really do anything on, um, the, the additional page. Yeah. Or if it makes life easier, just to delete the personal one, which okay. might be a lot easier. I I understand. So actually, you Edit can't. It. Yeah, actually, you can't do either. So okay. number one, um, you must have a personal profile in order to run a business page. So they can't oh. be run separately. They can't be run independently. And the reason being for that is that Facebook wants to know that every single person registered with Facebook is an actual human being as opposed to a bot. So a business page will always be associated with a personal profile. And secondly, what they're doing now is they're introducing this thing where um, they want you to prove who you are. So invariably, it's driver's license or passport. And if ever you um, if ever you got locked out, that's what they're going to want. So if you changed your personal profile to your pen name, if ever you had a problem, you won't be able to prove that um, from an ID point of view that you are right. that person. So I'd like highly encourage you not to do not to do that mm. as well. Um, okay. In terms of business pages and groups and not willing to put your real name out, um, there isn't a way around it until the groups will let a personal profile in, um, unfortunately. Yeah. The only other thing that you could, you could do is if you know somebody that would allow you to use their personal one, um, like maybe family member or something you could join the groups as them and post under their pseudonym um, right. but you might not wish to do, you know you might no. not to do yeah. that but i can't i can't think of an immediate way around that and it's it's, it's kind of they're protecting us but i know it's a i know it's a pain as well mm. Yeah, because a lot of Facebook groups will be yeah they, they don't want yeah they don't want business pages now do they the so, other thing so, like on yourself Oh, sorry, the other thing you could do, I was just thinking out loud, um, mm. you could um, <laughs> join as a as, as you as the person and then direct message the members in the group and make friends. Um, that would still involve your real name being um, visible. Mm. Yeah, I know. Oh, I had no idea it's gone now. Um, oh, no, it's gone. No, but if you remember... Oh, yeah, can you... people see... If they look on one profile, can they see your other profile? And how do they do that? No. So if um, somebody on a business page can never see that it's Penny behind it, they will just see the business page as the business. So 24 Fingers um, doesn't have, from the outside view, doesn't have any affiliation with Emma Good. Obviously, they would, people might see that Emma Good likes the 24 Fingers post, for example, but the two aren't linked. So anybody that's followed you on a business page can't see your personal pictures, for example. Right, and vice versa, they they show they can't if they look up under my penny stuff, <laughs> they don't know it's linked to a precisely that. Precisely yeah. Oh, that. I thought because yeah. I thought some I thought they could see. It. Okay, well, yeah, no, so you, right. you've got a little bit of kind of incommunicado there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks for that. No, my pleasure. Um, I know Claude Claudia wanted to ask some questions, but I think she's dropped off. Um, and um, Tony drops off, so I don't know whether there's any problem with their internet. But um, I'm I'm here if Nada has any questions for Amanda. And I was going to share until um, anybody comes up with um, a question, I was going to share, I put in the original email um, about a client that reduced their marketing spend by 95% this month. And the way that they did that, we are advertising a um, consultation and we're using Facebook and Instagram to target people over 25 living in London that are interested in um, skincare. So we put up a post that um, basically offered free consultation with one of the five practitioners. 
And then we split test it. So it's all about split test and measuring, but we split test with a video of founder talking about the marketplace and talking about the benefits of using them. And the video took the cost of a lead down from £35 down to £3.70. So I was so super happy, super happy. And it basically meant that a um, uh, number of leads for the same budget, like, you know, nine, she nearly 10x the amount of leads she was getting per day. And that just shows how important it is if we can to use our faces in our social media versus a flat image because that client is saving huge amounts per day and also getting 10 times the amount of leads that she expected before. So um, I was super happy and that's how that uh, stat came about. So if anybody is considering running Facebook or Instagram campaigns and you need another um view on it or you'd like me to audit just uh just please do let me know um oh cold is back no problem cold yeah i saw that you dropped off how can i help i know that you had a uh, question that you uh, wanted to be asked <laughs> hello emma it's lovely to see hello. you again oh, um, my pleasure. on the lunch and learn and i think this is a great idea because there's more time at the end <laughs> On the lunch and learn, I don't even like really ask questions because I let other people, they um, have more important ones. Anyway, um, I have uh, two small businesses, but this other one is I'm starting with e-commerce, being home now with a toddler. Oh, you know, nice. mom's always think about making some extra money. So I saw a lot of people starting to sell online, but yeah. I wanted to like do it the right way because I see so many people doing it the wrong way <laughs> that you just want to like send a message. Hey, you know, that doesn't look right to me. You know, you wouldn't make me. So that's what I'm trying to say. I want to learn the right way. I signed up for a so social media course. Mm. What? Would you advise me to, you know, learn besides that? Because maybe there wouldn't be, like, enough. Yeah. And it's marketing one with Coursera. <laughs> so I hope that's going to cover me a bit. And yes. also, I have another question I don't want to forget. So you can ask uh, both after. Um, I bought the domain and I just can't, I said, maybe it's not the time yet. I'm waiting for my daughter in a few months to go to nursery and then pay for an email account because I saw it could be even like 10 pounds a month or something to make like a business one that it looks more professional isn't it but mm -hmm. I was thinking can I start doing the social media account with my my normal email and then also add the business one it wouldn't make a difference no I just need to put some strong passwords no make yeah. sure I don't go hack yeah, so that one, that one's the easiest one. So at the moment, you could just, um, you could just use your personal email, um, and then once mm -hmm. you've got your business email, just transfer it over in the top in the profile. That's absolutely no problem at all. Um, awesome. So I think you touched on a really great point. Um, with marketing nowadays, people think social media is the go-to because it's sexy one, right? And if we seem to forget about SEO or email that we've just discussed. Um, so I run a course as well. I run a weekly course for people. And we cover literally how to um, write in your own tone of voice, how to define your tone of voice, how to find your customers, what makes a great media post, what is SEO, how to implement SEO on a budget, how to find what people want about your brand, how to measure your leads, how to do lead generation. Literally, we go through, mm -hmm. I think, the hundreds of It's so it. attractive. I might go to your website. <laughs> it's well, all the good stuff that we actually need, isn't it? And do you know the difference, Claudia, is that I don't just tell people, I show them on the calls. We have an hour together every week, and I actually physically show people how to do it, and I show oh. That I use rather than you know like you go on these courses and you get loads of notes but then you don't do anything after yeah, they um, just read on slides and it's so annoying like I could have went on YouTube and you know so the way you do it like this yeah I think that's awesome I might join that's great that would that would be my so pleasure because nice be. you know being frank there's millions of people on YouTube like amazing people on YouTube but I find that entrepreneurs nowadays have got so much content being thrown at them. They could spend 24 hours a day on YouTube, but what they really... No, no, I meant instead of paying somebody, they literally yeah, just read yeah. the slides. Yeah. <laughs> Better to just go, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's awesome. So I'll just start slowly like that because I'm so excited. And when you have that passion and fire, I think you have to act on it, you know, because sometimes you're not that bothered. So yeah. uh, I have those eyes sometimes and I'm like, oh, I just want to do something. Go no, and do something. Do it. 
my stuff logo and stuff or whatever so i just let my creativity go so yeah it's Maybe. good thank you no pleasure and um i was gonna say just going back to youtube like i think um what i was trying to say no, was... no, no, i'm not because it's overwhelming if you don't go to the right places to get the right information like in the right order somehow you get overwhelmed and it's too much and you also maybe learn wrong things in the room so i prefer to like go to an expert like you and thank you again for this session and your time it's oh, no, no. so kind of you no my pleasure I've got, i think i've got your email so i'll send you the course yeah. brochure yeah i'm subscribed so, yeah yes amazing then, thanks <laughs> okay we'll keep in touch anyway Thank you, Claire, and congratulations on uh, two businesses and a toddler. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Thank That's you. Superwoman, superwoman. Um, Thank you, too. Thank yeah. everyone here. Thank you. Um, so Amanda's just asked um, a question about um, percentage conversions recorded, what's normal. Um, Claudia, uh, Amanda, I'm going to be really honest. I don't know that answer. Um, I can probably ask other people in the team I wouldn't know that off the top of my head um let me I've got your email let me introduce you to um some tracking experts because I think they're going to probably give you better information than I can um 99 seems really really high um if I'm honest what's your gut feel Amanda Yeah, I'll um I'll, I'll email you. We can we can have a conversation about that. No problem at all. Yeah, oh yeah, you thought that's it. Yeah, I thought ninety nine was like a lot. Um, but let me get some more uh, expert. I'm very much one for being um honest and transparent. And if I don't know the full answer, I'd rather not uh, give you duff information. So yeah, we can talk about that offline. No problem at all. Um, that's all right as well. Microphone, yeah, tech. Still four years later, still uh, Zoom still causes problems. Um, Penny's asked any tips to grow followers fast, especially on Instagram and Facebook. So, I was gonna say, followers fast nowadays, TikTok and um, TikTok is probably the quickest way to grow an audience and the network. But if you, if your audience is on Instagram and Facebook and you want to um devote yourself on those particular platforms, I would definitely say, um, include your face. Be authentic, show the behind the scenes, show your story. Um, don't automatically just send people to your website because that isn't great from a um, Facebook algorithm point of view. People want to be inspired or humoured. They want to feel an emotion. Um, so just make sure, I mean, doing what you do, this, this will become really easy and natural to you, but doing what you do, just make somebody feel stuff um, from a service-based business um i tend to say people either want to save money make money um reduce stress they want to feel benefit um in your case it's a little different they want to feel an emotion so use your storytelling skills to do exactly that and tell a story through your social media i think um it's something we talk about on my course um being authentic is really 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 key for a founder business and if you've got a really strong brand and a brand archetype, that makes content creation so much easier. I hope that helps. Hey, and we've got some more time. I think everyone's struggling today with tech. So we've got some more time. If anybody wants to ask me a question, please do feel free. Uh, I would say thank you, but I couldn't find a mute button. So oh, thank you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. And thank you for the feedback again on my book. I really appreciated it. Well, that's fine. I hope it wasn't too harsh. <laughs> oh, God, no, 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 no. Um, I, if anybody doesn't know, I'm writing a book at the moment. I sent it to Penny for um, some uh, critique. And I find that when you're so close to something, you need those objective eyes, right? And for me, like, I'm a single parent. I'm, I'm a sole direct founder of a business. I do everything on my own. So I need a community around me to give me feedback, like, 100%. And I, and I really appreciated your views. Oh, thanks. <laughs> keep keep going. Keep writing it. I've got honestly, I've got to find the time, and then I've got to go to all the publishers. But um, it's been yeah, it's been very useful exercise, and I think it will help. It will help my yeah. brand for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um. 
but let me just see if there's anybody else on the call. Um, so my actions from today, Amanda, I'm going to... Uh, all right, go for it, Amanda. Amanda's got a question about blogs. How often should you post a blog? Brilliant. Second time I've been asked that today, actually. Um, Google want to see regular content, so I'd highly encourage people to be blogging at least once a month. Um, more, it depends on your objective. Like, if you... I've got a, a website that you really want to optimize for SEO, then you know weekly, daily blogs. If you uh, if you haven't and you can get away with once a month, definitely once a month. In terms of amplification, consider putting some paid spend behind a blog post. Um, consider um, getting into PR. Consider um, repurposing a blog in many different ways. So make it a lead magnet, make it a podcast, for example. I'm not um, fully au okay fait with what your product is um but we can definitely have a conversation offline and if anybody would like to have a kind of one-to-one -one with me let me pop in my um, link to my diary and then we can talk kind of specifically about your own business because i know that there's um kind of more in-depth things that we want we can discuss um just just one-on-one -on -one. and savannah's asked another great question which was what app is best for blogging now with uh, if you can put it on your own website you're going to improve your seo um if you put it on something like medium or reddit or something like that you're going to improve their seo so it really does depend on what your objective is with a blog if you want your website to be ranking then own your stuff and we we see this when instagram goes down or, or twitter goes down people are suddenly like oh my god i'm not i can't don't control my own destiny and a website or an email is something that you do control so I'm always about um, putting your assets where you can control them as opposed to third party site um, Amanda says is just posting your website and linking from social media enough um, it's enough to get visible um, I would definitely SEO optimize it if you want to get Google's attention and I would consider like I say repurposing it so if you're a product business I would recommend looking at that blog and then seeing how you can get that on Pinterest, for example. And there's lots of um, quick and easy ways of doing that. And again, if you want to talk about um, how we could support with that, feel free to pop a time in and we can kind of look um, something on the course that I do. We, we have a module on how to get 14 things from one asset. So you might do a video and we show you how to get 14 different assets from that one video, which saves you so much time because as entrepreneurs, we're always, um, always pushed for time, aren't we? So if we can create one thing and then get 14 different things out of one thing, that that's uh, Nirvana in my book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like we're marketing, we're accounts, we're sales, we're everything. <laughs> um, Penny asks, should we use hashtags after every Facebook and Instagram post and can we be creative with the tags? So hashtags are becoming less and less crucial now. It's all about SEO keywords within social media posts. Personally, I never put hashtags on the Facebook post because I don't use a hashtag when I'm searching on Facebook myself. Um, I use Hashtags on Facebook if I'm being ironic. Um, that's probably because I'm of a certain age. So that's why I do that. And in Instagram, it's all about social keywords. So do your keyword research, embed those into the caption, and that's more critical now than hashtags. Mm. Yeah, just have some fun with it, Claudia. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I always do sarcastic hashtags. It just makes me smile. And, you know, our brand is all about being a bit ironic and a bit funny, I'll try to be. Um, so we've got the freedom to do that. It wouldn't work for other brands. But for me, if you see me in person, I am going to be the person that drops their H's and um, uses slang because that's me. And I don't want to pretend in my brand to be anything different because otherwise people would have a massive shock when they met me in real life. And I think that brand authenticity is super, super, super important. And um, when somebody um, when somebody joins us as a new client, they get a form to say, what, and one of the questions is, why did you join up? And most people say, because we're down to earth and we're easy to get on with. And, and I um, and I, uh, I like that, because that is us in real life too. Um, 
So thank you, Amanda. Thanks for staying on. Really appreciate it. And yet yeah, we will talk to each other via email. And um, yeah, close it. My son wasn't moody actually. He was alright actually. He, he was um, he was he was good. He's like the easiest thing in my life. Everything else has been a bit chaotic, <laughs> but he he was he was amazing. Um, Penny asked, my daughter just thirteen now in two weeks. So you know, girls. I think um, sorry to say, her period may come. So probably it's the hormones, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I know she's a great girl, but it, it's just funny when they, you know, how how this generation is. Uh, I also wanted to ask you about security. So we do the two factor and any other advice that you would give us or there would um, be enough? Just, um, I would say like, just make sure everything is strong password. Always have like two admins on any of your accounts and um, two FA is a really good idea. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh, pleasure. Um, so Penny asked, how do you embed um, SEO keywords? So um basically think about the captions think about what you're trying to serve from an seo point of view um penny we run a session on um, seo and knowing funny enough i've just done it actually um knowing um what people are searching for and what words to use so if you do want to have a separate thing on that um feel free to let me know but essentially within your caption you're incorporating the most popular search um search terms within it as opposed to relying on hashtags and um savannah um, miss week said bit of sound did, did you say instagram not facebook i think it oh um on hashtags so yeah i don't use hashtags on facebook i do on instagram but i don't on on facebook um, only because sometimes I think it shows that you've just auto posted from Instagram or Facebook. If you leave them in, it looks a bit ugly. But then I'm a bit of a nerd, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I think I've taken everybody's questions in. Um, I've popped my link to my diary. Um, on next, I think it's next Thursday, the thirty first. I've got my next event, which is how to get more leads into your business. So. I've trained now about 1,300 entrepreneurs and I've identified seven ways um, that successful entrepreneurs get leads in their business. So if you're uh, looking for more leads in Q4 2024, do feel free to pop on that. The details are in Eventbrite and we'll just pop that into the link too so that you've got that because uh, people, people want leads. And I think with the budget coming up next week, we're all going to need as much money as we, as we uh, can get, to be honest. I think it's going to be a bit shocking for us small business owners, to be honest. Um, but that's just that's just my opinion. Uh, that's no problem, Savannah. Uh, thank you very much. Let me just pop this in to chat. And then uh, let everybody go. So this is the next event. It's on my event wrap. Uh, just then. Cool. So thank you very much for those of you that are watching um, online. I will send a follow up email. And thank you so much. Uh, as always, I really love these sessions and I'm glad I can share as much value as possible. Thank you, everybody, and see you soon. Bye bye.